Are you in the market for an EQ pedal or for some reason your brand new distortion pedal or amp or something along those lines just doesn't quite have that mojo that you're looking for? Well, then you might be in the market for an EQ pedal. You just haven't considered that yet. At any rate, stay tuned. You don't want to miss this pedal in this video. Hey, I'm Robert. Thank you so much for joining me here in my home studio. Uh, today, we are going to check out the Donner EQ, the new EQ from the new Seeker series, uh, or at least, uh, you know, newer anyway. So before we dive too far into the details of this thing, let's hear some tones. Uh, I am going to use uh, basically just the first guitar that I grabbed, which is my BC Rich ASM Pro tuned to E standard uh, with a set of active EMG 81 and 85s going into my trusty Randall RD20 head uh, and, and from there into my oversized seismic audio cab loaded with a pair of warehouse guitar speakers, Veteran 30s. And from there, I am uh, I have it mic'd up with a Sennheiser E906 on one speaker and a Shure SM57 on the other, going straight into my Tascam uh, DP24 Porta Studio recorder. So, so now you know the signal path. Let's hear some tones.
Okay, uh, you know, really a pretty, uh, pretty small, pretty straightforward EQ. Uh, you know, a ten band EQ with, uh, you know, with a just a single switch and uh, a single level control over here on the far right that will allow you to cut or boost up to 15 dB. Let's take a little bit closer look at this thing. All right, so here is the pedal itself. The, uh, you know, overall, honestly, it's built a little bit better than. Uh, than I expected it to be. Uh, again, you know, the EQ Seeker is what this pedal is called. EQ out of the Seeker series. I kind of wish Donner would do something with their logo. I know that that's their logo and it's recognizable, but I'm sorry, every time I see it, I just can't help but think of their first run of pedals that are, you know, that were, a lot of them were just really, really inexpensive and you know, I mean, that, it's kind of like the Behringer logo, you know, it's, you know, regardless of how much better their products have gotten, you know, that logo and the name kind of is kind of a turn off. So uh, if you ignore that, you know, it's a very small, very compact 10 band EQ, uh, use, you know, that has, of course, a ton of uses. I The demo that you just heard, I'm using it in the traditional manner. Uh, I just plugged the uh, guitar into the input of the EQ pedal and then out of the output into the front end of the amplifier so uh 10 band eq there is your level control as i mentioned there's your switch uh nothing on the sides and of course on the back and of course on the back there is your barcode stuff uh polarity information etc etc you know the overall construction build quality of it actually feels really really good the switch is not a clicky type switch you know so it uh you know so it engages and disengages on the release rather than the press in uh, you know, but you know, with a quick push like that, as you stomp on it, it's really not that big of a deal. At least it never has been for me. Uh, again, the overall construction—it's not that not real, real heavy, but you know, it's a little bit heavier than I did expect it to be. Overall construction, you know, the housing feels solid; doesn't feel like it's going to come apart or anything. Uh, one thing I am not a fan of, though, is the are these sliders. These things, you know, they they lock in place in the middle. You know, they've got that little uh, nub, if you will. That tells you when you are dead set even, uh, dead set level, if you will, on all of them. But you know the sliders themselves just feel like you know if you stop on, stomp on that switch wrong or something, you hit those sliders, they're going to snap off pretty easily. So that I'm not real sure how I feel about that yet. But you know, as I mentioned, you know, EQ pedals have a ton of different uses. Uh, you know, I tried to, you know to kind of you try to demo some pretty common uses for EQ pedals. Uh, you know, the uh, the 4K frequency is known to be a little, uh, you know, can be a little a little harsh, uh, particularly if you are playing with a brighter sounding guitar like a uh, like a Strat or a Tele or something. Uh, you know, you can cut that frequency and maybe just a little bit of the 2K along with it and uh, kind of smooth it out quite a bit of course if you're a bedroom metal player you know this you can do the scooped eq thing very very well you know where you you know dump the mids and boost the lows and the highs uh get that classic scoop metal sound out of it fairly easily and you know what's cool about that particular tone while we all know it does not cut through in a band mix very well at all you know for bedroom practice you know it is fun to play around with and it can actually make a you know a mod a, a an amp that doesn't sound all that heavy actually sound a lot heavier so that's one reason why that EQ parameter is popular. Uh, you know, I happen to like to boost the lower mids. You know, I really like that setting quite a bit. Uh, like a lot of 10-band EQs, the, for the uh, 16K frequency and the, uh, uh, the 31 and a quarter on the outsides, you know, the lowest and the highest frequencies don't do a whole lot for... Uh, at least for the guitar that I was playing, playing it through. You know, had I been using, you know, like a really thumpy, you know, bassy 
guitar that might be down tuned or something that low frequency would probably uh, have a little bit more effect and then again in the instance of a brighter sounding guitar like a strat or a tele or something along those lines those higher frequencies would have been a little bit more pronounced uh upon adjusting those particular controls as well but uh that said that's a good thing about 10 band e 10 band eqs even if you don't use the two frequencies on the outside too much the rest of them are very very useful and uh these you know an eq pedal is great for you know again trying to you know maybe shaping the sound of your amp or distortion or overdrive pedal uh something that you that you might have that has like a single tone knob that you just can't quite get it where you uh, get the tone where you want it an eq pedal can really help to fine tune those situations uh, i've always liked to use eq pedals as a solo boost uh, by running them into the effects loop uh, so that way they hit the amp after the preamp section. And, uh, you know, they were a lot of fun to play around with, particularly with, you know, boosting solos with delays and reverbs and things like that, you know, among other things. Now, I have always been a huge fan of the MXR 10 band EQ, which is real, you know, kind of what this one is based off of. I don't want to call this one a clone because what the 10 band has that this pedal does not. The 10 band EQ actually has independent gain and uh, volume controls. So, you know, so you can boost either one of those parameters without, you know, without necessarily boosting the other versus this one, which is just an overall level control that uh, cut or boost of uh, 15 dB. And again, that will boost both the level and the EQ. So you can't do that independently like you can on the MXR 10 band, uh, you know, or on, uh, you know, like a more advanced EQ pedal, like, you know, my new favorite, uh, being the Boss EQ200, for example. But that said, this you know the Boss EQ200 is also about five times the price of this pedal and takes up a lot more real estate on your pedal board and is a lot bulkier and heavier. So in short, it's not really fair to compare this to a pedal like the e like the Boss EQ200 or even something larger than that. But uh, for comparison, towards a more moderate sized and priced. E, uh, 10 band EQ or something along GE7, something along those lines. This pedal absolutely will do what it's supposed to do. Uh, it operates as advertised and will certainly get the job done for a very, very small fraction of the price. So thank you very much to uh, my new friends at Donner for actually sending me this pedal. Uh, I had a lot of fun checking it out. And uh, yeah, you know, of course, we always have fun checking out pedals on this channel. So uh, I will post links, as I always do, down in the description below. Please don't forget to do the uh, like, share, subscribe thing, as always. And adios, see you later, bye.